Hi again. Uh, I guess today we're going to revisit transformations of functions. Um, so basically what I'm doing, I'm starting off with giving you some rules. So when you're doing transformations, you're doing it, you do it in the order ERT, which means expansion and compression first, reflection second, and translations third. Um, an example of expansion and compression, if you have the factor in front of the function. So you have the number in front of the function. I'm just using two as an example. This will mean vertical expansion by two, and therefore you're multiplying the y value of the coordinate by two. Another example, another way to look at it, if the numbers in front of the x instead of front of all the function, well, if the, front, if the numbers in front of the x, then it becomes horizontal compression by half. So what you're doing, you, you're taking the reciprocal of two and that's what you're gonna multiply the x value by. The second thing you do after expansion and compression is reflections. And reflections, if you have a negative in front of the whole function, then it means a reflection in the x axis. So usually if you're reflecting over the x axis, is the, the sign of the y coordinates that's gonna change. However, if you have the negative in front of the x instead of instead in front of the whole function, then this means reflection in the y axis. And that therefore, if you're reflecting over the y axis, you'll change the sign of x. And the last thing is translation. So you have if you have y equals f of x, close the bracket, plus three, that means it's a vertical translation up three. But if you have x plus three inside the brackets, f of x plus three inside the brackets, then it's horizontal translation and you go opposite of the sign. So you go three to the left. So I'm giving you an example and I'm just giving you a point. So if you have a graph, basically take important points on the graph and you could apply all the transformations to that, those points, line them up and just do all the transformations. You, you'll get your final points and then just plot all your final points, connect the graph. So we're just gonna take an example just with one point if we have negative two and one. So what I advise you to do here is to write what's happening to the graph. So now following this order right here, I'm looking at vertical expansion by three. I have to change this a little bit. So I have to write negative three F I have to factor out that negative one half and I'll get X minus six. So basically if you, if you factor a half, what you do, you double this number and that's what you get there because now you know if you go, and that's a plus, sorry. So if you go negative half times positive six, it will give you negative three. So if you factor out a negative half in front of the function, then you just know it's easier to factor out uh, an integer rather than a fraction. But uh, if you factor out a half, then you just multiply this number by the reciprocal and that will give you six in there. Um, if you don't do this, your final answer will be wrong. If you think this is translation three to the right, that's wrong uh, because that negative sign and that number is gonna change when you factor out the negative half. So now we have a vertical expansion by three. The half makes it horizontal expansion by two. As I mentioned here, if you have a two in front of the X, you do the reciprocal, you multiply by the reciprocal. It's compression, not expansion. Since we have a half, then the reciprocal of half is two in front of the X, and that means horizontal expansion. The next thing we have a negative in front of the whole function, that's a reflection in the X axis. And then also I'm looking from here as a matter of fact, so we have a negative in front of that X as well, instead of, rather, instead of being in front of the F, this negative means a reflection in the Y axis. And the next thing we have six to the left and one up, those are the translations. This six here, 
since it's with the x, you do opposite of the sign, so you move six left, but this is plus one, you do as of the, as of the sign, you move one up. So now let's take this point, which is negative two, negative two and one. So this point that was negative two and one, I start applying these things step by step till I get to my final answer. So my vertical expansion by three vertical affects the y coordinate. So you multiply the y coordinate by three, that becomes negative two and three. Horizontal expansion by two, horizontal it affects the y, sorry, it affects horizontal affects the x value. So you multiply the x value from here by two and you end up getting negative four and three. Now, at this point, you're gonna do reflection in the x-axis. We agreed the reflection in the x-axis is gonna change the sign of y. So this becomes negative four and negative three. And then the reflection in the y-axis, reflection in the y-axis, if you reflect over the y-axis, you're here, you go there, you know the sign of x, to say it was a three here, it becomes negative three when you reflect it this way. So basically, it's that x, x coordinate that changes the sign and since it's negative, we make it positive, so four and negative three. Left six, you take away six from the four, it gives you negative two, and up one, you add one to the negative three, it gives you negative two. This is transformations of, fu of functions in um, nutshell, so I just, me here, I'm just gonna put negative three and then I'll, when you do that up one, that becomes negative two and negative two. I hope this helps you when you're doing transformations. It is that simple if you simplify it. These are your rules. I like having rules written on the right side of my board so I could go back and look at them and see how I could apply them to what I'm doing. I hope this helps you in your grade 12 math transformations or if you're doing first year college or university courses that uh, involve transformations. Um, anyways, till next time, stay safe and I'll see you soon.